we're going to look at Obamacare. Basically, the opposite of this photo, which is more, Obama don't give a fuck. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we devoted around 20 minutes to Republicans' efforts to repeal and replace that bill. And the reason we have to talk about it again tonight is this. Breaking news overnight. Republicans reveal their long-awaited replacement for Obamacare. House Republicans roll out a revamped health care plan. It is finally here. Oh, yes, the Republican plan to replace Obamacare is public. This is the American Health Care Act. Yes. It's finally here, the American Healthcare Act. You may not have wanted it, it looks awful, but it's here anyway. Try and think of it as the legislative equivalent of Pirates of the Caribbean 5, the curse of Johnny Depp getting divorced and needing the money. <laughs> and as will be the case with that movie, the early reviews of this thing have been rough. This thing is probably dead on arrival. Conservatives hate their bill, I promise you. Obamacare light, Dead on arrival. It seems dead on arrival. It's dead on arrival. They're calling it a stinking pile of garbage. They're well, calling that it was dead one. On, that was they're one. calling it dead on arrival. Yes, much like the life behind Melania Trump's eyes. The <laughs> AHCA looked dead by the time it was introduced in Washington. And there is no doubt the bill got enemies quickly. The American Medical Association, the American Hospital Association, the American Nurses Association, and the AARP all immediately came out against it. And even people you would presume would be happy about the repeal were not exactly thrilled. Let me show you what was the front page of Breitbart this morning. Freedom Works opposes Speaker Ryan's Obamacare 2.0 plan. And I don't think, Selena, they mean that in a nice way. Yeah, I don't think they do either. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they mean it in the sense of Ryan is a beta male snowflake who needs to save space for his cuck-servative bill kind of way. <laughs> Essentially, it seems people on both sides see the AHCA as just being shitty Obamacare. The way Old Navy is a shitty version of The Gap, and the way Easter, let's be honest, should really just be called Shitty Christmas. <laughs> Only one month till shitty Christmas, everyone. What are you asking for? It had better be a basket full of beans, cos that's what you're getting. <laughs> But, but here is the thing. This bill is not actually dead on arrival. There is still a chance it could become law. So, given that, we need to take a look at what is actually inside this thing. And let's start with one of the big changes. As we anticipated, it gets rid of Obamacare's insurance tax credits, uh, which are based on many factors, including income, and they've replaced that with a flat tax credit based on age. Uh, here is how it works. The proposal provides tax credits to help pay for premiums. Someone under the age of 30 would get $2,000. Someone 60 and older would get $4,000. OK, uh, so the older you get, the more money you get. That's easy to understand. Think of it as the exact opposite of being a woman in Hollywood. <laughs> now, now, as we discussed two weeks ago, the key question here is, do the size of those credits sufficiently cover the actual cost of health insurance, or are you left like a middle-aged man in a thong, horrifically undercovered? <laughs> and to help answer that question... I'm sorry, can we just take that down? <laughs> Thank you, that's much better. <laughs> uh, to help answer that question, the Kaiser Family Foundation uh, made a tool showing you how you might be impacted by this new bill, uh, based on your age, income and location. It's, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure game for a very specific type of child. If your kid likes Caillou, he will love this interactive map of tax credits from the Kaiser Family Foundation. <laughs> so, let's say you live in Woodward County, Oklahoma. You're 60 years old and you earn, say, $50,000 a year. Under Obamacare, you get $13,350 towards insurance. But under the new bill, that will drop down to just $4,000. That is over two-thirds less. And it's not one of those two-thirds decreases that you barely notice, like when Robin and Barry of the Bee Gees died. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Barry is fine. Robin and Morris are dead. Or are they? Or are they? The point is, they are. Although, to be fair, I have no idea, you don't either, and I don't see either one of us Googling it anytime soon. <laughs> but that is really just one example. There are a lot of people who would be harmed by the switch to these flat tax credits, and experts say one thing is pretty clear here. Those who are lower income would be particularly hurt. And that is before we even get into Medicaid the programme that largely provides health care to poor and disabled Americans, because that is where this bill gets really vicious. And you know the changes to Medicaid are rough, just from how creepily enthusiastic Paul Ryan sounds talking about them. Let me just describe exactly what this bill does for Conservatives. This is why I'm so excited about it, and this is why I think people need to see the forest through the trees. We are de-federalizing an entitlement 
block granting it back to the states and capping its growth rate. That's never been done before. He is rock hard talking about that. <laughs> Somehow you can actually hear his erection during that. <laughs> and if you don't know what he's talking about, that just sounds like a benign pile of words. But when he says defederalizing, block granting and capping, what that means in layman's terms is cutting the living shit out of Medicaid. According to one analysis, the plan would cut at least 370 billion in federal funding for Medicaid over the next 10 years. Now, what that means is that states would have to make up that gap to maintain current levels of coverage, which for many of them will be next to impossible. So when they don't, millions of the poorest Americans will lose coverage. Millions. And I literally just heard Ryan getting another erection when I said those words. <laughs> And when you combine that with the insufficient tax credits, an estimated 6 to 15 million people are projected to lose insurance. But to hear Republicans like Jason Chaffetz tell it, there's an easy solution. You know what? Americans have choices, and they've got to make a choice. And so maybe rather than getting that new iPhone that they just love and they want to go spend hundreds of dollars on that, maybe they should invest it in their own health care. That is complete bullshit. And it's frankly a little hard to take a lecture on making good choices from a man who presumably entered a barber shop and said, give me the wet poodle pubes. <laughs> Make it look like this photo I took. The truth is, if insurance cost as much as an iPhone, we wouldn't even be having this debate. People are going to be hurt by this bill. And those hit the hardest, who stand to lose $5,000 or more under the new plan, are, ironically, a group that voted for Trump by a huge margin, which is pretty frustrating. It's like if the people of Pompeii voted for the volcano. <laughs> oh, I know you get to define your own self-interest, but I wish you hadn't voted for that volcano. <laughs> so, look, if this bill is bad for older Americans, poor Americans and many Trump supporters, and all these groups oppose it, who exactly is it for? Wealthy Americans are set to get a sizable tax break under the GOP's health care bill, and the ultra-wealthy will see an even bigger tax cut. Some of those in the top 1% of incomes will get a tax break of around $33,000. Wow. Those in the top 0.1% will get an average tax cut of about $197,000 under the GOP plan. Wow, indeed. So this plan is literally taking money from the poor and giving it to the very rich. It's essentially a reverse Bernie Sanders, <laughs> which is actually also the name of a sex act consisting of very aggressive fingering. <laughs> and it is not just liberals uncomfortable with this idea. This week, Paul Ryan paid a visit to Tucker Carlson's second second chance attempt at his own TV news show with Tucker Carlson <laughs> and found himself under attack. Kind of a hard sell to say, yeah, we're going to repeal Obamacare, but we're going to send more money to the people who've already gotten the richest over the last 10 years. I mean, that's what this does, no? I'm not a leftist, it's just that's true. I'm not a leftist, that's true. Ryan's plan is so harsh, it just caused a 47-year-old boy man in a bow tie named Tucker <laughs> to worry about seeming overly sympathetic to the poor. <laughs> and, and before you point out that Tucker Carlson isn't wearing a bow tie, he is just not where you can see it. <laughs> and, and it is not just Tucker here. Many Republican governors uh, and members of Congress have expressed real concern that this bill is going to actively hurt their states. While on the other hand, amazingly, those on the far right wing of the party, like Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama, think it's way too generous. This far and away is the biggest welfare program uh, ever sponsored. And quite frankly, it undermines the work ethic. It increases greater reliance on welfare from the federal government. Ultimately, it's going to result in the demise of our country, or at least contribute uh, to our debilitating insolvency and bankruptcy. So this bill seems almost universally hated in Washington. It is truly the Ted Cruz of health care legislation. <laughs> Fuck you, Ted. <laughs> Fuck you from Everybody! So, so the White House clearly has a tough sales job ahead, and their efforts so far have been less than impressive. Just watch White House press secretary and breakout star of Bridesmaids, <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, deploy <laughs> some visual aids. For all of the people who have concerns about this, especially on, on the right, look at the size. This is the Democrats. This is us. There is... I mean, you can't get any clearer in terms of this is government, this is not. First, 
she's a national treasure. But <laughs> the second, that is the most aggressively stupid thing I've ever seen. And I just saw Jason Chaffetz suggest paying for health insurance by retroactively not buying an iPhone. <laughs> And that low page count starts to get actively worrisome when you find out what they spent a decent amount of time in there focusing on. The Republican plan contains a section devoted to making sure people receiving government health care assistance who win the lottery are removed from the program in an orderly fashion. In fact, six pages of this bill is devoted to letting states disenroll high-dollar lottery winners. Okay. So, a not insignificant percentage of this bill is focused on the urgent matter of what if one poor person suddenly becomes less poor? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised they didn't also have a section covering what would happen in the event of a Freaky Friday type situation. <laughs> if the Medicaid recipient Freaky Fridays into the body of an individual living above 138% of the federal poverty line, states are obligated to de enroll recipient until recipient Freaky Fridays back. <laughs> using wish or magic not otherwise specified, or Freaky Fridays into an eligible body. <laughs> and yet, and yet, despite all of this, Republican leaders are ferociously trying to jam this bill through. Already, it had been introduced in the House and passed by two committees. And, and yet, there is one person, though, you, you may have noticed I haven't actually mentioned so far, and that is Donald Trump. And the reason he's been largely absent from our story is that he's been largely absent from this story in general. Because, putting aside the prop comedy of the star of Mike and Molly, <laughs> the White House has been pretty hands-off with this bill. And is there really any way, deep down, that Trump has actually read this thing, <laughs> given that he recently said this? We have come up with a solution that's really, really... I think very good. Now, I have to tell you, it's an unbelievably complex subject. Nobody knew that healthcare could be so complicated. Everybody knew that! Everybody knew healthcare is complicated. Literally everybody. It is the one thing people know about healthcare it's complicated. It's like you're saying, who knew King Tut was dead? Everybody did! He's as dead as Barry Morris or Robin Gibb, or all of them, or none of them. There's no way to find out. <laughs> Trump has been noticeably distant from this whole process, and perhaps nothing shows that more than how this bill is being branded. Is it by any other name? Trump care? I'll call it, I'll call it Trump care if you want to, but I, don't, I didn't hear uh, President Trump say to any of us, hey, I want my name on that. Holy shit! <laughs> Trump is not clamoring to put his name on this bill, and he's put his name on some of the shittiest products <laughs> in human history. He put his name on a vodka, even though he doesn't drink, whose slogan was success distilled, which was discontinued. <laughs> he put his name on Trump toys, which looked like the answer to the question, if erectile dysfunction was a fabric, what fabric would it be? <laughs> He even slapped his first and last names on Donald Trump Jr., a man who looks like a six-year-old drawing of a mean bank teller. <laughs> Trump not wanting his name on the healthcare bill is like Tyler Perry not wanting his name anywhere near Jew, a Medea Hanukkah. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, I can kind of understand Trump not wanting his name on this. It contains almost nothing that he promised, as Laura Ingram pointed out this week on Fox & Friends. The Trumpism of the health care reform, the, the Trumpiest parts of it, were the transparency Trumpies. in pricing, competition across state lines, and even on the edges, you know, repealing the McCarran-Ferguson Act. Where is that in this plan? Oh, I'll tell you, it's not in there. He is pushing a health care bill that is missing a lot of what he said he wanted, and that is the kind of top-shelf deal-making that you can read all about in his best-selling book, The Art of the... Wait, what was the deal I wanted again? Oh, I forget. Well, anyway, let's talk about how hot my daughter is, right, fellas? <laughs> va va boom <laughs> And, and Trump, Trump clearly noticed that criticism, because shortly after the segment aired, he tweeted, Don't worry, getting rid of state lines, which will promote competition, will be in phase two and three of healthcare rollout. <laughs> and then, as if to eliminate any doubt as to whether he was watching Fox and Friends, he ended the tweet, at Fox and Friends. 
and, and by the way, it's just, just about that buying across state lines business, Trump and Ryan keep promising that it's just around the corner, but two things you should know. One, it probably won't lower prices. In fact, these three states currently allow it, but not a single out-of-state insurer has taken them up on the offer, which does actually make sense, because if you're an insurer in Massachusetts, it takes a massive amount of time and investment to set up new networks of doctors and hospitals in Maine. And that's assuming Maine even has doctors. I think it's mainly beavers with stethoscopes up there. <laughs> so, so this... This state line thing is something people love to talk about in theory, but no one really wants to do in practice, like apple picking or shower sex. <laughs> but, but the even bigger issue is it's almost certainly not going to happen. The state line's bullshit and a lot of other things Trump has promised are not in this bill because they cannot be, as Paul Ryan well knows. Interstate shopping across state lines. We love that policy. We think it's critical. But as you well know, you cannot put that in a budget reconciliation bill, otherwise it could be filibustered. Exactly. He is right. For procedural reasons, this is being presented as a budget bill, which Republicans can pass with a simple Senate majority. Any non-budget related policy change requires 60 votes to beat a filibuster, so that is pretty much a dead end, meaning that this bill is in all likelihood all Trump can get passed to replace Obamacare, so it is fucking important everyone understands what is in it, and that the something terrific that he promised, better coverage, lower costs, no one losing their health insurance, well, this bill is not it. The bill Trump is championing will ac actually increase costs for older, poor Americans, and will cause millions of people to lose coverage. Somebody needs to explain this to him. And since he is clearly still watching Fox and Friends, <laughs> we might actually be able to help here, cos... Cos you might remember, uh, last month, we bought time on that show to have our catheter cowboy explain to him <laughs> what the nuclear triad is. Well, saddle up, partner, for tonight, you ride again. <laughs> just think about it. Who better to tell Trump what this bill will do than someone who stands to be hurt by it? Someone in his 60s, in rural America, with an unspecified medical problem that requires constant treatment. Please enjoy this ad, which will air on Fox and Friends in the D.C. area on Wednesday morning. Attention catheter patients. Hi, me again. I'm a professional cowboy and I use catheters. Been cowboying for 25 years and there's two things I know. I don't like pain when I cath. And healthcare is a complicated business. Everybody knows that. Literally, everybody. Also, if my premiums go up and subsidies go down, I'm going to wind up paying more. That's basic math there, fella. That's like replacing my catheter with a garden hose. I don't want that. I do not like pain when I cath. The point is, if that happens, millions of folks like me might get real angry, which is worth thinking about if you're the sort of person who really likes being popular. You get that, right? Right? You get that. Right? Right? <laughs> you get that, right? <laughs> <laughs>